I uh, <laughs> I set up a production company. Just decided to start calling myself a producer because I couldn't get anybody interested. And I'm like, well, you don't you don't get a degree in producing. Nobody you just say you're one. So I said I was one, and I designed a letterhead, and uh, I um, had uh, uh, I. Uh, I had a little space in the office in the back and I, I every time I came in I would just turn it into my production studio and uh, would take calls and phone out and stuff and uh, I'd have to keep explaining what the ding was in the background because you know, <laughs> the door open. Um, but uh, it worked because I just started sending out um, letters to actors saying would you be interested in being in this movie right because so i had a friend who worked for a uh, a post-production company in uh, on wardour street in london where they do a lot of movie making and they had these books of actors and actresses and it would tell you what agent they were with and stuff i can't even remember what it's called so um uh, i got a call back from um he literally phoned me directly i got a call back from tim roth oh. uh, saying he wanted to play Felix and uh, and who was directing. And like an idiot, I didn't know at the time he was looking for a directing gig. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to be directing. So um, he gave me a letter of intent and then he called me at the shop. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm totally winging this. I don't know what I'm doing. But um, <laughs> so uh, he gave me a letter of intent to say he wanted to make the movie and we could use it for six months to go out and raise money. Um, uh, my mate James got hold of a low budget script. Um, uh, sorry, a low, it was a script for a movie with a low budget and he got hold of the budget. So um, I copied the budget and basically re, you know, I could do basic math so I could figure out, cause it's based, you know, everything was on film then. This is the mid '90s, so I could work out the cost per foot and stuff like that, and how long I think this thing is going to be. And I did some artwork. I did some, you know, some uh, concept art, and I did some, I did some uh, 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 sort of basic, um, you know, uh, various other images. I got someone from art college to do some character designs and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, what happened next? A um, uh, friend of mine from college who then ended up working at Sky for a long time as a producer, Mark Aldridge, he was, you know, we were in class together. He said, I think I can go take this and try and find a co-producer. Because at this point, we're like, I, I don't know what, what the fuck we're going to do if, if someone gives us money. I, so we need someone that knows what they're doing. So he went out and found a small production company um, that would partner with us. And, um, uh, oh boy. So then we decided we'd go to the Cannes Film Festival to raise money. Now, bearing in mind, I'm part-time at this, uh, at this um, Threshers. And I'm also on uh, uh, unemployment benefit. You know, it's like, it's like the supplement benefit. I don't know if oh, any yeah. of that exists anymore. All right. Yeah. So <clears throat> when you get government benefit, you're not allowed to leave the country. So, so I left the country and um, we had this, you had to get accreditation, right? For, yeah. So the, the story of making the movie is probably more interesting than the movie. So, you, <laughs> so in order to, to get into Cannes at, the, at that time, you had to be accredited, right? And one of the ways you got accredited, and it's the most facile, pointless way of getting accredited, is you had to have like a company stamp on the form to show that you were a real company. Um, and, and at that time, like getting a stamp is like two or three hundred bucks. It was two or three hundred quid, actually. It's more expensive than that. And so we couldn't afford that. So um, we had someone carve one out of a potato and stamped the form and it looked like a company stamp and they gave us accreditation. <laughs> so, so, we, 
So we get into the Cannes Film Festival and we start taking all these meetings. And because I got this letter from Tim Roth, um, it, it, they, they take the meetings, they, they agree to meet us. And so we're going to all these different hotels, you know, to meet different production companies and talk through the movie and stuff and raise interest. I ended up getting invited by accident to the premiere of um, LA Confidential. Wow. So we're sitting wow. there with all the big wigs. I'm like, I'm like, now I've got no money. I'm living off off free sandwiches that from a from a food truck on the street. I got a borrowed blazer from a bloke who worked at the water pool, right? Because it was the only thing that looked this. <laughs> <laughs> And, and there I am at the, this premiere. So I'm meeting various famous people. I'm like, I somehow got invited to the British film party, Ken. And so you just start talking to different actors and directors and you're like, okay, they're normal people. So you didn't really have to be as nervous as you thought. And once you start getting used to talking to them, it becomes very easy after a while. That's the experience you pick up. But it's like, I can't be the only one here that is completely bullshitting his way through this thing. <laughs> um, and I realised very quickly, I wasn't. That is the job. Producing is bullshitting until you get there. So um, uh, we got a lot of interest. Um, get back to London. And so I start travelling up to London like once a week to work with these co-producers. Um, and uh, long story short, we ended up losing Tim because he got, he, he got his directing gig. He went off and made some really dark movie about pedophilia. I can't even remember what it's called, but it was like, I don't know, set in, I don't know, set in Cornwall or something. I'm not sure. I, I, I can't really remember too much. But anyway, we lost him, but we got real um, interest from... Uh, this uh, management company, Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, so we thought, well, this, this isn't gonna happen. This is, this is ridiculous. Um, but um, I did a bunch of rewrites to try and make the character, because the main character was Felix. Hmm. Right? He was the star of the movie. Well, as soon as we heard Samuel L. Jackson was interested, I had to rewrite the script to make, to make uh, McElroy the star of the movie. Um, and um, I had done a little reading on him, and I knew, I, here's the thing what you have to do with a screenplay, right? It's like selling a vacuum cleaner. You have to, you have to sell it to the people that you're trying to get, right? Yeah. So I describe him as a bald black guy, tall, menacing, so something that sounds like him, yeah. but he's wearing a kilt, because I'd read that he likes doing dress-up, right? That's what <laughs> actors are in it for. They like dressing up. And no black actor at that point had ever done anything in a So it was like an iconic image. And um, so we sent it to him and they said, yeah, he wants to meet. So I then get flown out to LA to meet Samuel L. Jackson. Sh sure, of course, wow. of course I do. Um, and um, I was actually in the room when he got the phone call that he didn't, that he didn't got Mace Windu. So like at that point, I was like one of three people in the world that knew he was going to be in episode one. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, the fuck? And um, yeah, because I'm still going to work at fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was basically how it worked coming out of the operation. And um, and then things just got crazier from there.